Well, this is Dr. Christopher Southgate from the University of Exeter in Devon. Thank you very much, Christopher, for the seminar you've just given us. It was a very stimulating and interesting talk, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about it in a moment. But I wonder, first of all, you teach science and religion at Exeter University to undergraduates. I wonder if you could tell us why you think it's such an important subject. Well, I suppose science and the great religions of the world are the two greatest sources of understanding about our world and how we should live in it. And it's therefore uh, both fascinating and really important to examine the engagement between the two. And, and what are the, the most important issues that you find crop up again and again in your lectures and conversations with students? Uh, well, always the uh, problem of suffering um, which is a particular interest of mine and uh, especially how it comes to be that uh, the natural world is so full of suffering how could a loving God have created such a world? Um, also issues about origins the origin of the cosmos why is there something and not nothing the origin of life itself human beings came to be the way they are, I think, are the great questions from my view. Now, the lecture that you've just given us was on the search for the origin of life. I wonder if you could explain why this is such a difficult question, it seems, to get an answer to. It's a really difficult question scientifically because all the... Uh, all the evidence has been wiped out, as it were. We don't have a clear notion of uh, what conditions were like on the early Earth when, when life first evolved. Uh, and all those very primitive life forms have long since been outcompeted by more sophisticated life. So it's like a detective story where all the clues have been wiped. And how have scientists tried to, to uncover this? What are, what are the options that they've come up with for the origin of life? Well, I think the, uh, the, the, the sorts of approaches science takes are, first of all, to try and simulate uh, those uh, primitive non-life conditions and see whether things, the molecules that turn into life, can be generated that's a very important line of inquiry. Another, obviously, is to try and find out more about the early Earth. And, and another rapidly developing field is to look at uh, other planets that might possibly harbour life and see what uh, information one can glean from them. That's been a, a rapidly developing field in in cosmology, hasn't it? Um, do you think there's life on other planets or elsewhere in the universe? Interesting, I've completely changed my mind about this in the last couple of years. Uh, even two years ago, I'd have said that uh, very possibly the Earth was the only life-bearing planet because so many things about it seem so unusual. But now we're finding that there, there are uh, a large number, possibly millions, of Earth-like planets across the universe. And uh, I think, therefore, it would be quite surprising if life weren't fairly, if uh, life of some sort weren't fairly abundant in the universe. And of course, as well as the scientific questions about the origin of life, there are also some theological ones that arise. Could you talk about those for a little bit? Uh, well, I think they do focus more on the significance of, uh, of other life, if there is any, um, because I don't think it's helpful to, to suppose that there was any sort of special or miraculous moment about the origin of life. I, I see it as an entirely natural phenomenon albeit one that we understand so little about at the moment. But I think the question as to um, how God might relate to millions of worlds um, and 
whether there will be sin, whether there will be salvation, a lot of the friends are very intriguing theological questions. And do you have the answers to them? Oh, no, the theology, uh, and certainly that sort of theology, uh, is not so much about answers. It's much more about falling in love with the question. On that note, Christopher, thank you very much for your time. And once again, we really enjoyed your seminar, which you can listen to on the Friday website. Great pleasure. Thank you.